Hi everyone, today is May 18th, the 18th day of Stitch Mania, and I do have to apologize, I didn't film a video yesterday. I was too busy yesterday and it slipped my mind, uh, so today's video will make up for that. Um, I am still working on my Disney Dream Cinderella Cross Stitch piece, and... Um, today I'm actually going to be talking about, just want to make sure I'm in the right spot, two over, two over, two in between, yep, okay. Um, I'm actually talking about the, um, little bit of cross-stitch history. Uh, I was doing some research on it and I found out that a lot of the oldest form of, they used to call it embroidery back in the day, and it was found mostly in the Middle East, and you can now, f and since then, it's actually been more common, uh, like time period can be mostly in the Middle Ages. Um, the first pieces ever made were called samplers, and to this day people still cross-stitch samplers, but the purpose for those samplers that were created a long time ago were for um, young girls at that time t needed to learn how to use a needle and thread on fabric, and mainly the purpose of cross-stitching was for household sewing. And it helped her learn how to do different stitches, how to um, not only hem things, but also it taught her the usage of a needle and thread. So that's how they did the samplers back in the day. The earliest uh, known cross-stitch sampler that was made in the U.S. was by Laura Standish in 1653. Um, so... That's one of the first earliest recordings of a sampler within the U.S. People still use samplers to this day, and they have different designs, um, different themes of samplers. I know some people do um, Americana samplers. Others do, actually, let me cut this one off, do um, Halloween samplers, Christmas samplers, a lot of holiday themes samplers are out there as well and then there's a lot of modern samplers that um, are made nowadays that people can stitch I personally I'm not a sampler person so I do not use samplers um, I have like I mentioned it's just not something that fits my taste Besides that, um, go right here, go on over. There, we go. Uh, there are also a lot of different, they call them cross stitching guilds or cross stitching groups um, throughout the US and in several towns. I'm pretty sure if you just Google a cross stitch group. Um, you'd be able to find one in your area. And most of the time, they either meet up at local needle workshops, which are called LNS. I don't have one of those near me. Um, and you don't really need to have one near you to be able to join a group. I actually follow several of them on Facebook. So I'm still within the community. I just don't have one. Uh, like in my local area to say I go here on this specific day and just work on my pieces. Um, but I'm sure if you do a, either a Google search in your area or if you do a um, Facebook group search, I'm pretty sure you can find one. And most of the times they meet probably like once a week and just work on pieces together. Some people have they use that time uh, to learn specialty stitches 
Some people go and work on one piece. Sometimes they even have it where uh, they have stitch alongs. Uh, it just really depends on what the group is doing. So they, they are a lot of fun. So if you have one in your area, join one and see how much you like it. Um, I know a lot of the times they are free and they usually meet after hours and they'll have like some type of like um, like pastry ba uh, potluck so they'll bring um, desserts so that everyone can snack on while they're working on their pieces or um, they have tea or something like that so they are a lot of fun if you have one in your area I don't so I just do um, virtual stitch alongs and that's what I do. Um, there's also, uh, besides the um, different stitch alongs that they have, or different um, needle workshops, there's also a lot of retreats that people go to. I've never been to a retreat, but there are several of them, and I've heard they're a lot of fun, and they usually have it surrounded by a theme, or they have it by um, a specific uh, cross-stitch um, designer, or things like that. Um, I've never been to one, like I've mentioned, but they do have stitch and reach treats. And I'm actually going to sit this down right here while I thread my needle for my next color. Um, yeah, but if you can go to retreat, that's great. If you can make it to a, a stitch, um, a stitchy night at your local LNS, that's also awesome. And if you don't have any in your town like me, you can always find a group on Facebook. You can always um, find a group online, which is great. Another little history about cross-stitching. Uh, there are The two most common threads that people use, or the floss that people use, are um, DMC, which can be found virtually anywhere at this point, and um, anchor threads. And they both have been manufacturing, they call it embroidery floss, since the 1800s. So these brands have been along for a long, long time. And they're the two most popular brands of floss that people use uh, for cross-stitching or embroidering. And there are different types of floss that you have six-strand cotton, you have pearl cotton, you have metallics, you have all kinds of them that you can choose from, uh, filaments and stuff like that. But these are the two main uh, companies that have been around since then. So you can trust that they're good quality. Um, if you don't want DMC or Anchor, there are such things as hand dyed floss. And these are specialty threads that different type of people um, make themselves. So you can either find them on, like on Etsy, or if you do a, a search for hand the colored threads there are some companies that dye their own threads and they sell them as well and they sell them at specialty shops um, i don't own any but some people do and they really enjoy them i mainly stick with what i can find and what can i afford and that happens to be dmc and i've never had an issue with dmc I like it, um, mainly because I can find it anywhere. And talking about DMC, uh, I'm not sure if you guys remember the last time I was working on 
the epic Pokemon cross stitch pattern. I was missing color 803, couldn't find it. Um, even though I had purchased it and it was sitting with my other pieces, I just couldn't uh, couldn't find it. Didn't know where where it went. So nothing like that. Well, I was moving some paperwork around and I found it. So now I have two 803s. I don't know why it keeps going in and out of focus today. It is raining where I'm at today. Um, it's been raining all day and I love it. The good thing is we have a balcony so we can open our big window or our doors to the balcony and just get all that fresh air and hear the rain. The ducks are actually quiet today and it's also a little bit windy which makes it sound like it's raining a lot harder than it actually is. Yesterday, the Sharks didn't win. They tied up on the series. That's fine. That just means we have more games to watch. And today, the Trailblazers and the Warriors are going to play in a little bit. So I'm filming before that game starts. Like Those games have been a bit disappointing. We've been wanting the uh, Trailblazers to win, but unfortunately... The Warriors keep winning. So we're hoping that changes today. Hoping is the keyword. <laughs> but we shall see. Um, why did I leave off that? Um, da, da, da. There. Yeah, this is the spot. So. Hopefully they win today. I mean, we don't really care for either team, but we just don't want Golden State to go. So that's it is what it is there. Um, now that I'm remembering right now, there are different types of fabrics that you can cross stitch on as well. There's anything from Ada to linens to even weave um, silks with uh, fabric that you can cross stitch on. Um, you can cross stitch on almost any material that you can think of. I've um, seen people cross stitch directly onto clothing, um, cross stitching onto pillows, uh, desk stationery, um, people have even cross-stitched using kitchen uh, mesh strainers, and they use it as a home decor. I've seen people cross-stitch on um, basically anything. I don't think there's anything I haven't seen anyone cross-stitch on. Um, I have actually seen someone cross stitch on paper. They sell perforated paper. Or if you have a die cut and you can perforate the paper yourself. And they cross stitch on it for gift tags or um, holiday cards. I've seen. Uh, actually, I saw at Hobby Lobby they have Ada cloth already stretched around a small wooden frame. And you can, it's a ready to stitch piece of fabric on a wooden frame. So if you have something that you want to stitch right away and hang it up without having to take the extra steps to, um, put it around a, a picture frame and go get it done, you can use that. Um, the fabrics also come in so many different colors. You can have your colors 
that most of the colors that I've seen at retail stores or craft stores are you have whites, you have creams, you have like oatmeal looking colors. Um, I've seen a few blacks, um, dusty blue. Sometimes you'll find red, sometimes you'll find green, but those seem to be like very rare. So these are the only colors I've found um, at a big box craft store. But they do sell online. Um, there are dyers who dye fabric um, different colors. They can stitch it to a specific color that you're looking for on a specific fabric. They also have, um, I've also seen fabric that is, has sparkle in it um, within the fabric and it's purpose is mainly to be used on a piece that you want the background to be shown. I don't have uh, any pieces that I want my background to be showing on, but if you do, you can do that. I've seen several people that stitch, um, they'll have like an all black pattern and they'll have a dyed fabric that's pastel colors. And the beauty of it, it looks like stained glass, reversed stained glass. So there are different options. Of course, it's, you can tweak it to your personal style, but there is something for everyone within cross-stitching. Um, and if you don't want to stitch on fabric, they sell kits that you can stitch on wooden keychains, or you can stitch on uh, pre-made bookmarks. Um, there's so many different things that you could do with cross stitching. The your imagination is basically your limit. So it has cross stitching has come a long way from just teaching young girls how to use basic sewing skills growing up to now being works of art on stationery, on desks clothing, um, everything. So if you want to try cross stitch, but you're saying, no, I don't want to, I don't want to sit there and stitch on fabric, or I don't want a big piece. You can start off small. You can go to your craft store, look up little kits. They even have kits that have unicorn themes, uh, mermaids. Um, you don't have to pick something that you don't want. They have something for everybody. They have cross-stitching that even has words. Um, they have some that are for uh, nurseries, kitchens, anything. So there's something out there for everyone. You do have to just search for it, but you will find it eventually. The other thing that I learned from doing research uh, on the history of cross-stitching is um, there are different needle sizes for the fabric. So depending on the count of your fabric, which means how many squares are in a 10 by 10, I believe, or something like that. I can't really remember. I forgot. I'm sorry. But the higher, I know the higher the count on your fabric. So if you have a size, for example, 18 count, your needle will probably be like a 26. And a lot of people think, oh, the higher the number, the thicker or longer my needle. And that's not the case with the needle sizes. The higher the number, the smaller and thinner the needle is. And the um, eye of the needle is really really tiny as well so there's not um it has nothing to do with how big your needle is going to be so and with cross stitching on the fabric the lower the number the bigger the cross stitch um holes are which is the opposite from a needle so 
it is a little bit different. You do have to pay attention to that if you don't buy a kit and you just want to make your own or you buy a digital one, a digital pattern. You do want to pay attention to your um, what size needle you're going to need, what size fabric, and make sure you have everything correct. It doesn't hurt to um, take your pattern to a uh, needle shop or a cross stitch shop and let them know that this is your first time working on one um, and ask for help and they're more than welcome uh, and willing to help you out. They Sometimes they'll even direct you on uh, the best fabric to use for beginners and that's when you really come to learn if you want to stitch on a hoop or stitch on a cue snap or stitch in hand uh, if you want to stitch um, starting in the center of your piece, in the corner of your piece, I start stitching from top left all the way down, and I go in columns. Um, actually, I go yeah, I start I go in columns. So I'll start uh, top left, page one, and then I go top left, page uh, column two. And I go on like that. So I do um, I do go in columns. So it'll be column, it'll be row one, and then it'll be column one through six, one through seven, depending on how many columns I'm doing. So for this piece in particular, because I couldn't find the second column first page that I was first row that I was working on, I'm actually on first column second row uh, page so you do want to see what works for you in that sense um, it doesn't always work for everybody so you do want to figure out if you start in the middle on the edge what have you and then you also figure out if you want a grid uh, or if you want to just go ahead and go for it and if you do grid, if you do want to use um, a water-soluble pen that they sell, fabric pen, do you want to use a silk silky and thread it yourself? Do you want to uh, use, some people even use a lead pencil. I don't know why. I wouldn't because I feel like the lead would just smudge everywhere. But some people like to use it. So it just depends on how you want to do that. Or even if you want to grid your fabric. Just depends. And then you also get to learn by stitching your different stitching methods. Do you want to do cross country? Do you want to do um, every single color in that column first? Um, so many different things. I know some people, they stitch... Um, Diagonally, I haven't done it personally. I just find it a bit confusing to stitch diagonally. So I just stay with what I know. And my favorite method of stitching is cross country, which is what I'm doing right now, which I pick one color and I just stitch every box that has that color until I run out of thread and then I'll move on to the next one however if it's confetti I stitch uh, all the confetti first and then I go in with the main colors oh I just messed up my nail so it just depends on the stitching method as well and then the other thing is the bigger your cross stitch area, so the little holes that you stick your needle in, determines how many pieces of thread uh, you're going to need. So if you need one thread, two, um, so there are some pieces that go up to five threads. I've never done anything with five threads. Um, the most threads I've ever stitched with is two, and that's this piece. 
so you do get to see what your style of knit of um, cross stitching is once you start um, once you start a piece. And if you do want to start, but you don't know if you're ready for it, just watch some videos. Go online, watch some YouTube videos on uh, cross stitching, beginners, people who have stitched um, for years usually have tips and tricks and you can adapt them to, to your stitching, see if you like it. So I am going to finish this thread. Which gives us perfect amounts. The other thing also before I finish this piece, a uh, few stitches, is um, you'll learn to to um, to work with how long you want your thread. Some people cut smaller pieces of thread. Some people cut larger ones. I usually cut mine to be the length of my forearm, and that seems to work for me. Um, some people want to usually cut between a seven to eight piece length of of um, floss for their, their pieces. But once you start stitching, you realize what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And at the end of the day, it's just about having fun and relaxing and knowing that you're working on a piece for... Either you or someone special, and it's handmade, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Well, this is the last stitch. Thank you guys for spending time with me today. Um, again, I apologize for not having a video up yesterday. But um, just know that this Stitch Mania is still going on for another few more, basically two more weeks. Um, and I'm excited to see how much progress I can get done here. Um, this is where I'm leaving you guys off at. So it's looking pretty good. Um, compared to the first day that I showed you guys where I had all this empty and I had all of this extra floss way up here, it's now slowly moving down. A lot of the confetti is completed and this sunspot is getting filled in. Thank you for spending time with me today. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Um, if it's raining in your area, stay dry. And hopefully um, the Trailblazers win tonight. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and commenting. I really do appreciate it. And I enjoy making these videos for you guys as well. And I will talk to you guys later.